All right. Let's build a starter assembly. So when you get these, it's always good to check around here if this sleeve was pre-installed to make sure that when it was installed that there aren't any cracks and flares here. Not that it wouldn't catch, but it could. And um, if you're doing any maintenance too, you could potentially cut yourself. So that one looks like it mushroomed out fine without splitting. Um, all right, so this happened, uh, I happened to order this as an OEM Husqvarna part, I believe made in Brazil, yes. Um, didn't come within it. I didn't order the whole assembly, uh, so I ended up having to order all the additional uh, parts, of course, uh, to put it together. So that's what we got to do here today. Okay, so the first thing got to do, or I would recommend doing before you forget, is to pop your cord through the sleeve. Make sure you do the right end, the correct end. Now, for the different saws of this generation and 200 and series, and I think even 394, the ends that fit around the pulley are different. Some you just not, some you don't. Um, some have this mushroom here, um, you know, so they melted the, the nylon cord. And there's different ways in which this gets wrapped around the pulley here. Um, so you need to know what uh, you're dealing with, which saw, and you're approaching it the correct way because there could be different clearances where you bring, you can't necessarily on this 281, 288, you can't just bring a line through here and tie a knot. Um, if you do, you may have some interference um, with the flywheel and so forth. Um, and of course, before you put your cord through the sleeve, you need to bring it through the pulley. And then the way this works is you're gonna catch it on itself. For this particular saw and this style or method, of securing the starter cord on the pulley, you're, you're not gonna tie a knot, believe it or not. You're just gonna cinch it down and it's gonna cinch down on itself. Pull it through, cinch it nice and tight. The cord is to cinch down on itself up against this mushroomed end and that's all there is to it. Now bring the cord through the sleeve and then for attaching it to the handle, if I can find the handle, Pretty much any knot will do. You probably want more than just a half knot. So what I like to do is a double overhand. So I'll just, there's a half knot. And then before I close it, I'll just bring it up and over one more time before I close it. And then try and get that right up to the very end of the rope so that you're sacrificing as little cord as possible so that your starter cord isn't too short. Anyway, that's just my preference. You might put in two half knots or just go with one half knot. You don't want this to be too burly so that it doesn't pull down th in and, and seat in that knot so we're good to go now the next step it's a little bit different process obviously if you're salvaging an old spring which can be difficult to put back in if you take it out 
So if you're servicing an old clutch assembly, if possible, you want to keep it in there and see if it's dirty, clean and re-grease it without freeing it from the starter assembly. Otherwise, it can be a bit of a job to recoil that spring so that you can get it back in place. So these are usually going to come shrink wrapped and they have a retainer wire around it to minimize the chance that it's going to slip free of that retainer. The problem is the way they shrink wrap it, it can be a little bit challenging to prevent that from happening. And that's because of how it wraps around the inside end of the spring. But it's all meant to keep this together until the last moment to minimize it from springing on itself. It just presents you with a bit of a challenge to get it all freed. And you don't want to bend this spring. Maybe you didn't even, may not have even caught all of this on camera here because I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. Yep, so you see what I'm saying right here, friends? See how it released on itself? And it released because of the way they wrapped the darn thing. And I had a devil of a time getting it undone here. So um, if this happens to you, you got to keep tension there and see how I fit it back together. Okay. So be really careful when you're do, you, doing these springs. Now, this open end is going to fit up and over that and anchor it. So I need to make sure I have it oriented correctly. Pop this down. And I haven't cut or snipped the end of the spring yet or slipped off the retaining spring because I need to keep this down flush so it doesn't pop out of the orifice here so th this is really tricky See how I'm going to try and position it right over that orifice. Again, this is really tricky. And if this is too tight right here, you may have to get in and open it up like I just did. So I just created a mess for myself, but we're gonna hopefully get this on before it completely unfurls on me. All right, so off camera, I got the coil in, it came unfurled. That takes a while to resolve. And now once the coil is seated, slip this little cover over it, that'll help hold it down. And then there's two tiny screws here that you use to 
almost like a washer in a way that secures the assembly so that you don't have to worry about the recoil spring unfurling. Tighten, of course. Just make sure you get it snug. So now your recoil spring is secure, and I ended up having to undo the starter rope and pulley and handle until I got the spring taken care of because that was a bit of a it's a bit of a cluster to solve if it comes unfurled on you but all is not lost it just takes diligence okay now This is facing the flyway. This will engage. You have to move it around until it engages with the spring here. And it will not fall completely below the lip here until you have it engaged. And that can take a little bit because as you can see it's going to be bound up against the stem there, but you have to get this inside of the spring. And that can be easier said than done too. Once you have that attached, And there's a chance you might be able to unfurl the spring a little bit to get it in there. Once that's down, then you just about got the whole thing licked. There, see how it went down? So now I can feel it engaging the spring. There's tension there. All right, so now what you want to do is, it's very crucial at this point that you make sure you have the handle attached because as you install that and start to put tension on it, it's just going to pull that rope right through and you need this to act as a stop in case you lose control over it. But this is actually... fairly easy from here on out. Okay, so as I had demonstrated before, I just did a double overhand knot. I'm gonna pull that in through here. Now we're ready to go. So, what you wanna do at this point is pull about, oh, I don't know, probably six, seven inches of rope around here. And you want to Move the pulley around like this. Let's see if I can get it the other way. Bring it in the notch like that. I'm actually going to back it out some. So 
So now that the rope is in the notch, it's free to move around. See how it's free to move around in there. Now, with the rope in the notch and plenty of slack here, I am going to And I almost did a major faux pas. Once you have that pulley in there so that it doesn't pull out on you, you need to secure it with the washer and starter bolt. Okay. So I'm just now getting it snug. So I'm gonna take my little torque wrench. There, it's clicking 4NM. It's not very much pressure. So now we'll continue what I was showing you. With the slack here, you will Actually, go counterclockwise. So what we're doing now is we're tensioning that spring. Okay. Now I'm holding it with your th with my thumb. I'm gonna pull this through to undo the coiling that's occurred on the rope. Now bring myself enough extra slack. So when you feel you have enough tension on it, hold it down with your thumb, move it. What you wanna do once you get to that point, you still wanna have another half to three quarters turn tension left. So when you feel you've got that much tension, holding with your thumb, once you clear the edge of that flange, you're gonna slip the rope back out of that notch. And then I'm gonna give it just a little bit more tension. You still want there, so now when you're, when you're preventing it from recoiling on, you, on there, if you want, you can actually put the rope back in the notch and you're gonna want, you can see there, I've got at least another half before it gets really tight. So I've got that additional leeway in there and you need that in case you were to pull out the starter rope too far, you need a little bit of give in there. So once that's happened, you've got it tensioned where you want the rope is out of the notch, then you can pull your starter cord all the way out, then grab that starter cord and let it recoil that cord into the starter. So now it should be tight so that this isn't flopping around. Give it some pulls. And we're all set except for adding the screws there to the starter housing, putting the decal on it. All right, so here's the completed starter assembly. I uh, did have to take it back apart because I had forgot to add grease. It's important that uh, underneath that bottom flange that sits on top of the spring that you grease the spring. Um, not a lot, but just a little bit on there, um, and that'll help prevent it from failing. So, here we have a finished starter assembly for a 288, and uh, until next time.